Hey guys, welcome. Today we're going to be um, trying to flatten out some uh, plates for my Harbor Freight uh, hydraulic press. These plates, I mean, they're, they're terrible. They're cast iron. Um, they're not flat. And one side's kind of convex and the other side's concave. And So what I'm trying to do is uh, I'm going to try to clean them up a little bit here. I got this um, this face cutter here with uh, carbide inserts. I want about 20,000. I've been wanting to do this for a long time. I've had this press for about three, four years now, and I was gonna make some uh, press plates out of steel. And, uh, you know, I, I've been using these, and they haven't broke or cracked or anything, so um, I'm just trying to make them better so that they're flat, so they lay flat, because they rock and roll on there. So if I can get them to lay flat, uh, that'll be a huge improvement. Let me put a straight edge on there. seems to be cleaning it up pretty good. in there if we can get it to lay flat that's uh that's what the goal is here i'm going to take another 20. that's going to be a total of 70 thousands i had to take off that side This is about a three inch cutter on this Bridgeport Series 1. You probably don't want to run anything bigger than this on a, on a Bridgeport Series 1. Um, you can hear a little bit of rattling up in the head. And I really don't like to run anything much bigger than that. I've tried bigger cutters on this. And wish I had a bigger machine. I really like that uh, machine that uh, Keith Fenner has, that uh, Kearney and Trekker. 
That's a really nice big machine. Or a series two bridge port, you know, that takes a 50 taper. But this is what I got. It's better than a bench top build. And you know, it's a good machine. It's a uh, variable speed. Got the variable speed head up there. Right now I'm running this cutter at about uh, 300, 300 RPM. I'm in the low range. Um, got the power feed on the X. And I also have the power feed on the knee. I don't have the power feed on the Y. Um, Mostly because most of my work is in the X direction and I hate cranking the knee. The Y direction is really just to get it over where it is and then I sweep in the X direction 99% of the time. This is the original Mitchell Toyo digital readout that probably came with this machine in 1976. It's a 1976 Bridgeport. Uh, when I got it, it wasn't working. I took the uh, last slides apart. They were just filthy with uh, with crud. I cleaned them all out, blew them out, put them back together, made sure all the connections were tight, and uh, it's been working great ever since. Um, this is this digital readout is the first, not this particular one, but one just like it. My first job, they had a. Uh, a bridge port with this Mitsutoyo digital readout on it. So this is the very first digital readout I was ever exposed to. That was back in 19... 1984, 85, 1985 I think it was. And uh, that was the very first digital readout I ever worked on. And. Uh, You know, and I got spoiled on that job. You know, back then, digital readout was a big deal. And now, you know, all my machines have digital readouts. I got a, I got a DRO on my lathe here. I just love them. Because uh, they just make life a lot easier. I got one on my surface grinder. You know... Digital readout gives you actual measurements. You know, the dials, the dials is a guessing game. You might be there, but you know, it doesn't take up for slopping the table and all that other stuff. When you have a, a digital readout, it gives you actual, actual travel. And it's, it's super nice for laying out holes and all that. Okay, we're starting on the second one. Uh, I'm doing the same convex face on both of these. When I'm done doing the convex face, I'll do the concave side on both of them. This one, I'm just doing the 70 thousandths all in one pass. I'll come back to it uh, once I get this one finished up and I start setting them up for the convex side. All right, we're gonna flip these around. Get pretty hot. Man, that is so much better than the way they came from the factory. That's hot. How much better that looks it cleaned up except for the very edges you know because it's got a radius on it but uh, that's gonna lay nice and flat on that uh, 
hydraulic press table. I mean, it's bad enough that thing's wobbly as it is, but uh, you know, when you got it wobbling in 15 different places, it's really hard to get something solid. So I'm gonna flip this if over. I clamp it without this little piece of wood behind here, it, um, it only supports in three spots. So if I put this piece of wood in there, the wood kind of takes up the slack. See what that looks like. Looks to me like we're gonna have to come up about twenty thousand. All right, let's see if you can see that. Now we got uh, right in here, we still got some little bit of witness marks, but we're ground down all around the four corners and, and in probably a couple inches on all sides, you know. So this is good. I mean, this is 100% better than what it was. I mean, if this is, this, this area here might be 10 thousandths, if that lower than in here it looks like we scraped the top just a little bit but I'm gonna leave it at that I think that's uh that's good enough for what we're doing here I got a little edge over here I gotta clean this up all right I'm gonna clean this up and then uh, I'm gonna mount the other one and I'm gonna show you guys what I ended up with pretty happy with the way they came out man I've been wanting to do this ever since I got this press and I've been putting it off and putting it off that press every day. Let me uh, lay these out on the table here so you can see. This one cleaned up pretty good. I mean, you can see there's just some porosity in there. I'm not sure if you can see that. Yeah, right in there. Um, right in this little edge here, it didn't clean up quite right. But I mean, shoot, that's so much better than what it was. I ended up taking 90 thousandths total off of them. This is the other one. This was the worst one here. You can see in this corner here. I mean, I didn't, I didn't get it all off because I would have had to take too much off. But man, this is going to sit so much better on those channel irons on that Harbor Freight press. And then over here, we got a little hollow in here, but it's not, it's not real bad. It's scraped just a little bit in this area, so I'm thinking that might be. I'll put a straight edge on it. Yeah, I mean, it's it's right about there. I mean, it's maybe a couple, two, three thousand slow. So, I mean, that's good enough for what we're, what we're doing here. We're not building rockets. We're just trying to get something that's usable. Look at that. Man, that is so much better. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, I think I'm, I think I'm going to do... A little feature on the, the mods that I did to the Harbor Freight Press. Um, stay tuned for that because I, I did a lot of modifications that really makes it so much more useful. Alright, thanks for watching.